We put our heart into everything we do. We are farmers, bakers, florists, and makers who grow and create with a passion. 1-800-Flowers, share with love. Hi, I'm Jim McCann, founder of 1-800-Flowers. I'm not satisfied when I learn something new unless I share it forward. And so we created this podcast to continue that, to share forward the wonderful people we get to meet and most importantly get to learn from and make our lives richer and better. Together we'll cover the human experience. And for me, the human experience is foundational in the idea of relationships. The topics will be far reaching, but common element you'll see here is it's all about relationships. So I invite you to join us on this journey. Come experience it with us, share your thoughts and ideas, and become part of our community. We'd love to have you. Now, it's a treat for me today to be chatting with you, Kevin McCann. And and although uh, we share the same last name, same spelling, uh, we're certain we're related somehow, but it's probably a really long time ago. <laughs> I will claim each other anyway, Jim, you know. <laughs> Uh, so, Kevin, uh, you reached out uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn, and I was intrigued when I saw that you were in the agriculture business, as are we, yeah. and uh, that your name is Kevin, and I have a brother, Kevin, and it, it just it just intrigued me because, as I mentioned to you and your dad when we chatted one other time, I, I knew one fellow in the produce business there who reigned from, from the area where you live. His name was Neil McCann. You said he's since passed, but he was a, a, a great fellow I met probably 25, 30 years ago, and I was happy to to get to know him. And we kidded about the fact that the, we were probably related. And at least uh, in, in your part of the world, there are McCanns. There's quite a few McCanns here in the U.S. too. Not as many in Ireland as I would have thought. It's not the most common name. No, it's um, funny in the local, when you go into really rural Ireland, um, in our own home parish, God rest my grandfather. I remember him telling me a story that there was when he was a child, there were seven sets of McCann families, but not one was integrated related. Probably, um, I think if you went through the history books, that probably somewhere jump someone jumped ship somewhere along the line. It's not a it's not a common name. It's primarily focused on the county of Armagh, which Ireland has 32 counties, obviously. Tyrone would be famous for O'Neill, Donnelly, you know, all these, you start going into the, the Fitzgeralds, Fitzpatricks throughout the country, O'Connells, there's various Irish names. And, and um, when you actually go into the Irish language, Gaelic, um, you call our names, you and I, McCanna. So it's M-A-C-C-A-N-A. -A -A. So that's the way you spell the, the Irish version of it. And, uh, you know, we're actually, there's like a document that um, you talk about history books and so on and so forth. Um, there's, a, there's an article that we came across a few years ago by a Dr. Eamon Phoenix. Uh, he was a local historian. There was a Neving McKenna. Um, I'll not even try to spell that first name for the gentleman, but uh, his history traces back to 1155 AD. And he lived in the County Armagh, County Throne border. And he was an apple grower. It's definitely, definitely in the we blood. Have, <laughs> so we have a long tradition. It's it probably uh, morphed into our DNA. Definitely, and, uh, definitely. And, and what, what, wasn't I tickled to see that you have this multi generational uh, farm and brand there in uh, in Armagh, and of yeah. course uh, now this this branch of the family uh, in the growing of uh, pears and apples too, with our uh, brand Harry and David, where we sure. grow in Southwest Oregon uh, our beautiful uh, Comis pears and uh, different varieties of apples, a lot of peaches. Uh, and now we're planting kiwis and grapes as well. So uh, keeping the uh, McCann horticultural tradition <laughs> rebirth here in the both, new both land. Si both sides of the both sides of the the Atlantic, says you, Jim. You know, it's a great story. You never mind anything else. You know, if if you weren't speaking with an American here, uh, would you be talking about being in Ireland, or would you be talking about being in Northern Ireland? Where I'm sitting now is in Armagh, so that's actually in the north. Um, so that's northern. And mm -hmm. uh, Ireland, so we, as our business, we, we are an all-island business, which uh, obviously in the last couple of years, not sure whether the, the states would have, I'm sure you've got a bit of press about the whole Brexit breakup over in Europe with the UK, which this part- Which is something that you must have been very concerned about because you grow your product in the north of Ireland, but your outlets are all over Ireland. Yeah, yeah. And 
in fact, a Dublin market is uh, is your biggest outlet. And uh, any, anything that might have restricted the trade between the counties of the north and the Republic of Ireland would have been devastating for the totally. McCann Orchard. Totally. And and actually, we actually operate both sides now. So we actually, I'll, I'll fill you in later on, but my grandfather would have, we set up base here in County Armagh in 1968, and it has done very well since then. And we've been, we've always called it home. You know, it was a major, major concern. Like anyone in business, our personal view, we were probably not for Brexit. We see that you better stay united and, you know, go as a team rather than break off. And I think I'm not of a generation that's seen the troubles of the past, but certainly my grandfather and father before me, I heard all the stories and my generation doesn't want to see that coming back. I would certainly believe that even course, in terms yeah. of socialising, you know, people, it's not like that nowadays, which is great. Obviously, you know, we can all go out to a pub and have a bit of fun and have a bit of crack, as the Irish say, and mm -hmm. uh, we get on with it. And, you know, um, I suppose 20, 30, 40 years ago, that just wasn't maybe as convenient to my dad's generation. I think in today's world, I've certainly learned you should always keep doors open, don't close them. And I think that's my personal view anyway. I think I don't logically see that the benefit of it over this part of the world anyway, there's obviously been a protocol deal done, which is going through some forms of difficulty with different levels of government. And um, I think it keeps Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland, and it keeps certainly the North in the EU um, trade uh, block, which obviously has to be governed by EU. And some of the UK counterparts are seeing that as a difficulty. So I'm not too proxy to it all. I just keep tabs on the news and kind of keep up to date with local government but, updates. But right now, uh, right now, the situation is that there are no restrictions to the flow of goods and services, and and you're expecting that'll stay the case. Correct. Yeah, NI to ROA, that's fine. If you're bringing stock from GB to NI or ROA, sorry, or ROA, you have to have checks, which isn't really a get great difficulty in my opinion because everything has to get loaded on a truck onto a boat. And it has to physically cross the Irish Sea. So, no matter about anything, you know, it's 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 far, it's a lot easier control from that point. But even having said that, you know, I think um, the island's far too small. Like when we we compare ourselves to the states, we're not even the size of a state. And um, I think well, just you know, to give people some context, in the whole of the Ireland of Ireland, about five five and a half million people. Oh, sorry, but that's actually in the Republic and then the North. It's about 7 million altogether, so it is. 7, North. seven million combined, okay, which is a little smaller than the population of New York City. Yeah. So, so just, to get, just to give people some context, but one of the things that you and your family are working toward is, uh, is to help the island of Ireland uh, with its uh, climate goals uh, to create less carbon uh, release into the atmosphere, to grow more, and part of that is to grow more product to be consumed uh, by Irish in Ireland, uh, and uh, and to be very sensible about how you grow. You tell us, Kevin, how how you've train, trained trained uh, ch excuse me changed your farming techniques to be more efficient uh, and to produce a better yield. Ergo, trees absorbing carbon from the atmosphere, producing more locally grown, really good produce that doesn't have to be transported a, a great distance Correct. by truck boat or air to kind of give a context uh, i just have a few apples sitting beside me i'm going to show them the camera maybe if you can see it but this is a bramley apple and that yeah. traditionally would be uh cooking, cooking apple, apple right? yeah for your apple pie and apple crumble and so forth yeah whenever you cook it uh, i'm not going to let on the sugars uh come out correct i'm not proxy to cooking too many but my mother definitely can cook <laughs> can make the best apple pie in the country, you know, but I'm going to say everyone says that about their mum. So traditionally, this area would be very focused on Bramley production. But when you look at the entire market of Ireland, probably the figures coming from the, the likes of the, the data research and so on, we import over 95% of the eating apples, the dessert apples into Ireland. So we're importing from mainland Europe, further afield, so, you know, South Africa, New Zealand and so on. So we kind of as a business it makes business sense certainly but certainly um, as a viewpoint you know my brother and i and my father said we need to make our make a move here we need to change something because if we can't 
diversify the market. What, what, we what an do? opportunity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, anyone can purchase a box of apples from France or South Africa and bring it in and put a buck on it and turn it over again and try to make a profit and survive. But I think our customers want to be working with people that are obviously ahead of the market doing the right things. I think the carbon footprint's going to become a major factor, certainly in the years ahead. I think already we can see focus is heading that road and packaging and so on. You know, one use plastic is a big no-no over this side. So going back, sorry, to the to the orchard side of thing, traditionally we would have planted, or my forefathers would have been planting 300, 350 trees per acre. And just to give you, in, and the, the guys watching in here, uh, an apple tree would be a, probably about a meter, about three meters in height. That's what it'll grow to. And it'll be about a meter wide. That's when you get it from the nurseries. So imagine 350 of them in an acre of a field. We planted 1,300 trees per acre, and it's quite a unique system. Certainly, it's the only, it's the first kind in Ireland. There would be plantations out like around the world, but so that's yeah, that's very dense planting. Very dense, very dense. We actually only have about. Do you, do you trim them so they don't grow too tall? Correct. Yeah. So our the whole structure basically, um, and you know, our business we're very hands on. Whether it's wearing a suit and a shirt and tie today, going to a customer's meeting or on a tractor tomorrow. We're very, very hands-on. We have a great team of people around us, but trucks were coming in. My brother and I were on the plow, my father on the digger. You know, we, we were stuck in the middle of it when we were planting, brought the trees in from the nurseries and gave them the best of care that we possibly could. Everything just clicked into place first. And this was in the middle of COVID. I think we th we forget about COVID nowadays, but when we when we think back, all the restrictions and so on, I'm sure it was the same in the States as it was in Ireland. It was difficult. Sure. Yeah, we planted, we started on the 30th of April, 2021 to plant. And we planted over 130,000 trees over the space of a month. And then we did the structural build after that. And this year, this September and October, 2022, we took a commercial crop of about 600 tons off that plantation. Well, that's so, terrific. You know, it was probably a two, well, you think it's mature tree, it was about a two-year-old um, dwarf off the nursery. We put that in the ground and, you know, you're seeing from bare wood to your leaf development to your bud, really, till you get to that. So, like, when you see, that's that's a gala apple there that came off the orchard this year. First of all, the trees, the actual trees in the ground are carbon sequestering. So they take in the CO2 from the air and actually turn that into oxygen again. So it's the exact same mechanism as your tree in your garden. And then as well as that, on the tonnage that we'll produce, we're going to save approximately about 190 odd thousand kilograms of food miles. So we're taking that off trucks. So we won't have to take in the trucks from Europe and so on. We're keeping the infrastructure in the country. And it's, it's, it's a tick box exercise for everyone, but obviously it takes a lot to get it off the ground, you know. And uh, how many different varieties of apples now are you growing? Apples, we, we, we've we stuck mainly, gal apple would be the main variety for the dessert, uh, the red yep. the red market, so that's that. And uh, then we have Golden Delicious, which we have pollinators throughout the orchard, so they cross-pollinate. They, they would be quite common in the dessert, the eating apple category. And then we still have the Bramley apple grown. We've, we've planted some new orchards of that too, and new rootstocks, which will give a far superior skin finish quality mm -hmm. and yield. And then we've went with Conference Pear, so that would be a Conference Pear and um, if you would have seen that anywhere before so that would be a big consumed product over that's our way that's a good looking pair that's a dessert pair as well correct and then unfortunately we've sold all our stock we have a brand or a pair variety called cutie q t double -E. and mm -hmm. uh, the 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 name gives it away it is a super super product and we're delighted that we're the first in ireland to, to bring it to market and we're actually expanding now to try to get obviously more plantation more yield and, and to date, everything, touch wood, is a great Irish saying over here. Uh, everything has went very well so far this year. And to be fair, we've had great, great respect from our customers. Everyone's really, really backing us. So it's great, you know. There's no day like a birthday. It's a time to celebrate. Every year, every wish that brought you to this point. Wrapped in birthday love. Toasting a future as bright as the moment before you. The best gift is each other. Where did you get the rootstock for the cutie pears? Uh, it came out of a nursery in Belgium. So the rootstock would be a Belgium. There's a, a company over there that bred it. And it's a red blushing pear. So it's totally in contrast to the, the conference. It's a red blush. I'll, I'll send you on a few pics, Jim, just for yourself to have a look. It's, it's a super product, you know. And we really we really see that as probably the, the new 
go pair, if you want to call it, for the market in times ahead. So we're, we're, we're linked in, which is great too, and it's sharing knowledge and so on. We're linked in with other growers in Europe. So there's growers in, you know, Belgium, Holland, France, even up in Norway and Sweden. Tomorrow I'm flying over to Berlin and there's a big exhibition. The Fruit Logistica would be quite a global and um, we'd have guys from the states over there as well and uh, we'll meet up with our counterparts in that per variety and you know share thoughts and share opportunities so it's a great great way of making friends and never mind anything else in the business uh, and sharing thoughts how, how long will you spend there in berlin at the uh, oh, at the event? uh back back home i think i'm flying out tomorrow and then back home friday night so brief brief short visit but uh, yeah but i bet uh, i bet there's a lot of learning that goes on in those uh, few days huh Exactly, it's hard on. It's it, it's very uh, it's tough on the it's tough on the feet, and uh, you certainly um, you don't need any rocking to sleep when you come back home, Jim. You know, <laughs> it's uh, and that and and uh, no, but it's a great it's a key event to attend. But you know, I think I think um, going back to kind of the Irish market, I think there's um, there's opportunity because we have it on our on our agenda, or we have it kind of on our feeling. That's on it's on our shoulders. I think maybe is the word I'm thinking of more so than anything. The apple business has been good to us uh, my family over here and i think it's about time we have to put something back in to regenerate it and kind of encourage new new product new kind of people into the business because i think when things kind of sit in the dull for a number of years it can kind of get static and um if it's not changing it's going backwards right yeah yeah and and you know that maybe just so cold sometimes to say at that road but it's the facts of life you know if if our customers weren't saying to us you're doing the right thing go for it i think probably we we might say we're a bit crazy but to date it's been great and oh, no you, you guys are crazy there's no question about it <laughs> it's in the surname jim it's in the surname you know <laughs> we have no <laughs> choice but what, what a wonderful thing uh three generations started by your grandfather 1968 in county armagh um, uh, yeah. you have uh, a, a few different uh few different growing areas now is there is there a likely to be a fourth generation interested in the business? Uh, not not that we haven't been told, but you know, it, uh, we, we we certainly plan on it. <laughs> we will eventually. Not that in the pipe work, not that in the pipe work in the immediate nine months anyway, Jim. Put it like that. <laughs> I, I, you know, I I think we have to sit down and talk about this on a separate issue here. Come on, we got to get going. You, you got to be productive. You have to be productive. You have to be productive. But we 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 hope and pray. So we do. I leave it in that note. Or maybe too. reproductive. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the blood. I think we'll be all right. We'll get something sorted. You know. But, uh, no, I, but have like a, even, I have seven grandkids. I'm willing to export. They work. Uh, they work like a Dickens, and they're very, very good. good at picking apples, especially if the the trees have been pruned and densely planted, so they don't have to climb ladders. <laughs> not a problem the kid they're, they're all very welcome not a problem we'll, we'll we'll bring them over and show them how it's done you know and you talk about family businesses and everything like i know i touched a, bit, a little bit of conversation the last time i spoke like even my brother oliver jr and i we had great we had great experience with my grandfather you know and then um, i didn't mind school work the brother totally uh he he was very mechanically minded and um I often remember my grandfather, we went to talk about St. Patrick's. We attended St. Patrick's in Armagh, which would, would have been one of the local schools. And uh, many a time, my grandfather would have collected us, not at school finishing time, but maybe at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, and we would have bunked off school. But we were always doing things for the business. It wasn't, we weren't down the town messing around, you know, and we had, we had great time with them. And it was nice to see that because I think business is corporate, a lot of things, but I think people forget the family businesses. It is a family and the calendar doesn't respect Saturdays or Sundays. Definitely not. And uh, if even it still if grows, uh, the weeds still pop up. Correct. And even if you've been out on a Saturday night, Jim, and you have a slightly sore head on a Sunday morning, you still have to get up and go. Uh, <laughs> not speaking from experience. Growing. Let's talk about uh, St. Patrick's Day in the U.S. Cities like uh, New York, Chicago, Savannah, Georgia, uh, Naples, Florida, wonderful towns all have these great Boston have great St. Patrick's celebrations. And I was surprised some years ago to learn from my Irish friends that St. Patrick's celebrations, which was much more of an American thing. Yeah. And and they were all puzzled about the idea of uh, uh, corn beef being the uh, the food because they said they'd never saw corn beef when they were growing up that it was boiled bacon and potatoes and Stew, uh, yeah. and, and uh, soda bread were yes. things that they remembered but they didn't remember St Patrick's Day when they were kids so people my age or younger didn't remember St Patrick's Day being much of a celebration in Ireland at all and it's only in the uh, uh, let's call it three generations uh, since then 
that it's become uh, that the Irish in Ireland are mimicking the Irish Americans in terms yeah. of their celebratory ways. Is yeah. that the same uh, in Armagh? Definitely. Like even from experience, uh, like in the local Armagh is the East, the classical capital of Ireland. So we actually have two St. Patrick's cathedrals in Armagh. So you have, of the, course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can't give them away, you know, but uh, the, you have the Church of Ireland, St. Patrick's Cathedral, and then you have the Catholic and uh, a little, there's two separate kind of religions, but very much get on yep. and move forward, which is great. And they actually, they bring the bishops and all together and they bring the communities together. And we have a massive um, St. Patrick's Day parade through the, through the streets and so on. And, you know, it's a great family day. Believe me, you have to wear a coat. You talked about a raincoat over there. I think uh, if you have a coat and a top coat and maybe another one just to spur, it's the best way to go. <laughs> it can get quite, quite chilly over here on the 17th of March. I learned that in Ireland, you dress in layers. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, it's a great, great, great spot for the for the for the all weather camper sort of thing, you know, but um, look at it, 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 even like Dublin, Dublin City has become a massive attraction for the for the St. Patrick's Day. And we have the, the R RTE, which is the national television service over here, you know, on on the TV all day and hooked around the hair and Michael D. Higgins uh, would make a speech and the shock and so on. So, I mean, the president of Ireland and the, and the prime minister of Ireland would be the, the sayings I've just spoke. And, you know, it's, it's a great celebration. I think probably the Irish don't maybe do it just just because, you know, we, we, we celebrate it, but we just take it and get on with it. Whereas maybe if we were away, if I was in Australia, I think maybe you would make more of home because uh, everyone likes a little bit of it's like a teddy bear. Everyone likes having a teddy of have it close by. And I think far away fields, whenever you hear of uh, Paddy or 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 Mick or anything like that, then uh, certainly in a in a far land, I think people value home kind of you know favors and so on. So I think certainly I, I haven't got over just yet, Jim, but I definitely plan to make a stateside visit for St Patrick's Day, some of the parades. You know, we have to make that happen. Um... You, you say sometimes the uh, expats are are uh, uh, hold on to their tradition, their celebrations, maybe a little bit more dearly. I know I worked with a for years with a an English uh, uh, origin company in the insurance business, and when I travel around the world to visit different of their outposts, you know, you their, their business followed the British colonial empire, and mm -hmm. you meet some expats in uh, in in uh, in Asia. And I thought to myself, oh, my God, these people are more British than the people in, in, the, in the UK. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it's that same phenomenon. You know, you, you hold dear those, those historical and cultural uh, celebrations and roots uh, as a way of clinging to your history. At, at Harry and David, when we've had our conversations, uh, Kevin, in the past with, with your dad uh, about uh, your products, one of the products that you're quite uh, well known for in Ireland are your juice products. You blend different juice products with uh, different kind of berry ingredients and all to round out the different flavor profiles. And, and we were thinking that's something that we'd love to introduce to our customers. And we do here. Uh, so it's a combination of Harry and David and 1-800-Flowers. Uh, at 1-800-Flowers and at Harry and David, we do a countdown to St. Patrick's Day because it's just fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. We count down to 17 days of March to St. Patrick's Day. And we do different things like uh, uh, do contests with our community, inviting people to share with us their favorite Irish novel, their favorite Irish song, their favorite limerick, uh, their favorite saying, their favorite toast, uh, favorite Irish movie, uh, uh, actor, actress, et cetera. We just do it just to have fun. And uh, and, and it is a, a great deal of fun. Yeah. We do, we're doing one now for Valentine's Day. We'd love to get you involved in a couple of different ways, Kevin. One, we'd love to expose the uh, P. McCann and Sons Orchards to our community in a, in a fun kind of way, like through our St. Patrick's Day countdown. But then in a broader kind of way, we at, at Harry and David have a program where we, rec you know, we, we grow our own product. And we have 5,000 acres out in, uh, in southwest Oregon, as you know, where yeah. we grow all of our product. But more and more, we realize that our community expects that we know who grows the best of blank, fill in the blank, yes. Yes. because we're involved like you are in the agriculture community so deeply. And we have our buyers and our uh, uh, reps 
who are visiting farms all over the country all the time. So we found a, a family farm in uh, in Ohio here in the U.S., a beautiful little microclimate right on the shores of Lake Erie. And they have you beat by three generations because they're six generations Jeez. of the Jones family in the vegetable growing business. And so we're introducing their product uh, to our to our consumers because we found that they're the best vegetable growers we know. And we're finding different niche growers of different products. And what we do is we put them in our artisan select program. If they meet our criteria and we're saying to our community, to our customers, that these are people we know and we've seen their facilities. We know how they think about things. We share values with them and their agricultural methods are up to our standards and we're happy and comfortable to introduce our community to their products. So I think we have a, an opportunity to do that with you and your products too, because I would imagine your uh, your cycles for uh, harvest are going to be just a little bit different than ours are in the West Coast of the U.S. So that would you know lengthen our ability to bring, for example, uh, uh, the Gaylor apple uh, to our customers in a in a nice, fun, interesting packaging that would <laughs> celebrate the fact that they are from Ireland and they're only available for a brief window and to bring them to our customers. So I think I think we could have fun with that. So we need to get you to plan the US trip. Love to have you come see our grow facilities and see what we do in uh, in, in the Rogue Valley in uh, Medford, uh, Oregon. And I bet we could uh, learn a lot from one another. That's music to my ears, so does Jim. And uh, I think it's key. This business is very much about seeing is believing. And I think, you know what, walking into one of your orchards automatically i think if you and i didn't even speak english or your colleagues and that and, and harry and david i think automatically we could start communicating because you just you have a feel for it i think and i'm i i'm saying that as a young guy you know uh i think it's are you it's, implying that i'm an old guy is that no, what you're saying not, no i don't mean that no by any kind now <laughs> not at all whatsoever you know it, uh did, how do i do, how do i undig that hole jim you know but uh, the, uh it's uh well if, if anything if the gene pool's looking good i think i'll turn out all right jim you know that's a compliment there so you're a good looking guy but uh, I have sons who are older than you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll keep the sweet talk so well short. But uh, you know, I th I just think that uh, look, it's amazing. And like you and I, you know, you talk about the the ways and means of the world, even through LinkedIn, and what a simple kind of just note or conversation can lead to. I think it's just amazing. And you know, you think back, and I, I I'm I'm looking just I'm in I'm in the conference room here at the offices, and there's a photograph of my grandfather. Just looks over. Uh, the 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 table and uh, I think back to him. The eyes follow you, Kevin. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> secretly when we're having a staff meeting, he he, he keeps he keeps everyone on their toes, so he does, you know. And uh, he, he drip feeds us back what they say about us when we leave the room, so he does. But like from a business that started like yourself, you know, um, like you started hard slog, and uh, on the street, and certainly what I've kind of done, found out about you, which is fantastic. You know, my granda uh, started bagging apples on the kitchen table and his kids went out and sold them and my father joined them in the business and you know it's it's real at the end of the day I think I think we forget that I think business someone started a business and and it takes that person that kind of gets the drive and you know thankfully we're very thankful uh, the brother my brother Oliver Jr and I that it, we've been born into it and I think kind of you know we want to leave our mark in the business um for the next 50 years if you want to call it and hopefully we'll be still there so we will be but um i bet it will be and i'll bet there'll be lots of innovations between here and there there's a uh, there's so much that uh uh the uh, the agricultural world i find to be so intriguing kevin you were born into it i wasn't uh we didn't have a lot we, well i lived in a very uh a beautiful place in new york city in fact we had a tree on my block so we felt like we were on a farm <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it, <laughs> but, but I genuinely have come to love the ag. Now it comes with all the different problems that you know yeah. about, uh, and I, I'm certainly much more keen about weather forecasts than I've ever been, because we've been struggling with the climate changes that are happening for whatever reasons. We, we think they're somewhat man-made or man-induced uh, yeah. changes that are taking place with our carbon emissions. Uh, and that's a, a, a personal journey that I've been on a discovery over the last year or so. From a from an agriculture point of view, there's so many more things. Uh, we're not blessed with the water conditions that you have there in Ireland. We have drought conditions. 
our, our growing area, which is a beautiful valley, is primarily high desert in its nature. And uh, and it's a wonderful place to grow uh, uh, our particular brand of pear, a uh, Comice mm-hmm. pear, as I mentioned, which is unlike the pears that, that you're growing. These are very soft-skinned, very plump, very juicy, very sweet uh, pears, the, the most delicious pears in the world. But uh, it takes a really controlled water system yeah. uh, to, to have them perform at their peak. And it's becoming more and more challenging. In fact, Friday, we had a multi-hour uh, deep dive on the climate issues we're facing. Where do we move our production? What kind of steps can we take to uh, mitigate some of the risks that we're taking and uh, make sure we get the crop that our customers have come to uh, love, and, uh, love and expect? So lots of challenges with our agriculture and and being a multi-generational uh, family in it, it's second nature to you. But for those of us who came to it late, it's it's a whole new set of challenges. But we'd love to share stories. We'd love to have yeah. you come visit our facilities. And we'd love to bring your uh, your juice, your different varieties of apples and, and pears to our customers. And who knows, maybe we'll find something that we can grow together. Look, there's loads of opportunities. The sky's the limit close to your heart there with that bit of Irish blood in you, Jim, you know, I think you'd really like to see it uh, succeeding and so forth. When you have Joe Biden hopefully coming over this part of the world, you might get him to call into the orchard when he's going past, you know. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe we could hitch a ride with him. I'm sure he's got plenty yeah. of room on a big airplane. <laughs> Say he'll squeeze you in somewhere in the, in the back hall, so he will, you know. I think just even like for future-proofing business, I think like you, you talked about the struggles and in, in, in the orchards and so on or the uphill battles rather than struggles. But I think, you know, there's always something, and rightly so, it's like us. We've done a complete culture change at our side. Like a lot of maybe the, the other growers would think we're somewhat mad, one word, but certainly, um, you know, we're trying to re-change, to change things for the better, for the future. And I think, you know, you have to you have to move with the times. Like you can't stay static. And I think look what you know, an opportunity that you can talk to people all over the world about a product that um, can be sold. A certainly an added value product can be sold. Our fresh fruit juices are pressed, so they're totally pure. Um mm-hmm. and that's all just product that's coming out of the pack house. And you, and you juice the fruit yourself? Yeah, yeah. It's totally we're a complete integrated supply chain. So we can control everything in our own product range. We do work with other local growers as well in the area and further afield, but we can control everything from, you know, the literally the tree in the ground right through to the customer shelf. I think that's probably one thing that has placed us in good stead for the future because our customers like to see transparency, I think is the word for it. And trust, trust is a big word. I think people maybe don't talk about in the food supply chain. I think trust needs to be there from a so customer. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, any any berries grown in your area? Not yet, but um, there would be some other growers. There'll be soft fruit growers, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and so on. And we don't venture into that, but uh, never say never. I think it's maybe the the word to leave that one, Jim. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, new product development might be looking after some area in that end of it, but uh, certainly. Uh, our our head of ag, his name is Matt Borman, is. Uh, uh, tickled with uh, the idea of uh, kiwis. So we're just planting some uh, kiwis that he thinks are an extraordinary variety of kiwis. We, we think our climate conditions would be just right for this particular variety of kiwis. I love uh, hanging around with smart people, know a lot about ag, and you and your brother Oliver Jr. are among those. So I look yeah. forward to ways that we can celebrate St. Patrick's together over this little pond between us. Yes, I look forward definitely. to getting you over here and getting you to see our operations and figuring yeah. out ways for us to bring your fine products to our customers, especially with the complimentary seasons. And who right. knows, maybe we'll take a plane load of them and come visit the farm, but we won't be there at harvest time because that's hard work. <laughs> that is uh, come any other time of the year, not a problem unless you want to get, I'll be hand, I'll be giving you a picking basket, Jim, and saying get started on row, row 201, you know. <laughs> Been there and done that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, but no, look, I think it, uh, it's the start of something beautiful, as they say, you know, and uh, I'll, not, I'll not just start my Irish singing yet, Jim, I'll leave that to the, to we're having a glass of Jemson somewhere, so will, you know. But, but I bet it wouldn't take much to provoke you. <laughs> no, definitely not, no, no, I'm not, I'm not too shy now, you know, but uh Look, it, it, it's 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 definitely it's a great opportunity, and and uh, I know uh, I have to give a full report to my dad. Unfortunately, I did mention to me just got tied up in another meeting, and uh, I see three missed phone calls from him already. So he's uh, all right. So you go uh, go tend to dad, and uh, we look forward to connecting with you again and celebrating together St. Patrick's Day. 
Great. And uh, slang of file, as they say over here, and best wishes, Jim. We put our heart into everything we do. We are farmers, bakers, florists, and makers who grow and create with a passion. 1-800-Flowers. Share with love. Well, I hope you enjoyed what you heard, and I know I'll be sharing it forward. I hope you get to as well. Let's keep the conversation going. Follow me along on Twitter at Jim1800Flowers and on LinkedIn at Jim McCann. Hope to talk to you soon.